Hi, this is the apparatus used for Mel's experiment, which is used to demonstrate standing waves. So, we need a frequency generator, and this is wired up to a signal generator, or sorry, a vibration generator. So, this will tell this how quickly to vibrate. Then, we have a string, or in this case, a rubber rope, because it works very well, over a pulley with some masses so we can change the tension in this rope here. So, I'm going to turn on this uh, frequency generator and I've already set it for the fundamental frequency. This is the lowest frequency at which a standing wave can form in an object. So, here we have a fundamental frequency. How this is formed is the vibrations or the waves that are created will travel in this direction, reflect off a fixed end and come back and as the waves meet they superpose and interfere. Waves meeting is called superposition. So these waves meet and they're, they're meeting in phase, creating an area of high amplitude in the middle known as an anti-node. At either end we have a node, in the middle we have an anti-node. This has resulted from constructive interference of the waves and the nodes are where you get destructive interference. Now, what I've found here is the fundamental frequency, the lowest frequency at which a standing wave can form, which is 4.7 Hz. If I want to find what's called a harmonic, uh, the fundamental frequency is known as the first harmonic. What I need to do is find an integer multiple of this frequency here. So I've got 4.7 Hz, and if I times 4.7 by 2, I get 9.4. So what I'm going to do is, uh, no, that's not what I want to do. I'm going to increase, I'm going to increase the frequency up to 9.4 Hz, uh, and we should be able to find the second harmonic. Four. So here we now have one, two, three nodes and two antinodes. So the second harmonic is equal to 9.4 Hz. The third harmonic will be equal to 14.1, 4 7 times 3, and the fourth harmonic will be 18.8 .8, roughly. Or 14.1. You get the point. Okay, so the important thing to be able to calculate is the wavelength of a standing wave. Now the wavelength equals the distance between two nodes times two. Okay? So I grab my meter stick, I can measure the distance between two nodes, a node at either fixed end, and the wavelength, or sorry, the, the distance between two nodes in this case is 82 centimeters, 0.82 meters. So that's going to give us 1.64 meters is the total wavelength. Okay. So, in summary, that was Meld's experiment. It's used to demonstrate standing waves and harmonics in a medium. The equipment you need is something to vibrate, a signal generator that will give you a frequency. Instead of just shaking the rope, it's good to use something electric that's uh, controlled, computerized. A string or rubber rope works best, masses on a pulley so that you can vary the tension in the rope, and a movable bridge or some sort of fixed end that can move is good. Uh, next, how is a standing wave produced? Two waves meet, moving in opposite directions. This is usually caused by one wave reflecting. Uh, they superpose, uh, they meet, not superimpose, creating areas of constructive and destructive interference. Where they are in phase, this is constructive interference, and where they are anti-phase, out by pi radians or 180 degrees or half a wavelength or half the time period, this is destructive interference. These areas are called anti-nodes, where they're in phase, and nodes, uh, the stationary nodes, the points that don't move on the standing wave, are where they're destructively interfering. Very important to remember the wavelength on a standing wave is calculated as the distance between two nodes doubled. Okay, so distance between two nodes. Two. Uh, the harmonics that will form uh, can be seen in this picture here. The fundamental frequency is the lowest frequency which a standing wave can be produced. And as you increase the frequency, you multiply the fundamental frequency by an integer number, a whole number. So if the fundamental frequency is 200 hertz, the second harmonic will be found at 400 hertz. So if you change the tension of the length, uh, string or the rope or the length of it, this changes the fundamental frequency. It's kind of like a guitar string. If you tighten it, 
or um, change the length of it by pressing on the frets, then you change the fundamental frequency. You'll know when you've got a standing wave because you'll be able to see nodes and anti-nodes. Also, the amplitude increases at the anti-nodes, whereas before you get kind of a, a low wobble, I suppose, 